Hello everyone, welcome to All Life Math TV. Today we have a challenge on the board, an exponential equation in algebra. So how do we solve this? Before then, let's look at the question. We have root two all to the power of root x minus root two all to the power of root y equal to 504. You see, x and y are positive integers. So how do we solve for the value of x and y that will satisfy this equation before we go into today's challenge if you new year this is all like math tv where we learn mathematics all the time and so consider subscribing and when you subscribe turn on the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever we drop an amazing video like the one you're about to watch right now without being said let's go into today's challenge without much waste of time so here we take our first step which is a solution let's put down our solution the question is the square root of 2 r to the square root of x minus the square root of 2 r to the square root of y. This is equal to 504. Okay, now the number one thing we do here is easy. We just have to rewrite the radicals we have here now. Okay, so rewriting the radicals here, we now have 2 to the power of 1 all over 2 all raised to your x to the power of 1 all over 2 minus 2 to the power of 1 all over 2 all raised to your y to the power of 1 all over 2 this is equal to 504 okay so if we look at this expression here this is an exponent this is an exponent here we have another exponent here we have an other exponent so what we do here we can use this exponent to open up this use this to open up this remember the law of indices which is a very common law that we made use of so we have we have a to the power of m n this is equal to your a to the power of m or in bracket n and we can equally move this in and take this out to give us here a to the power of n or into your m so if we look at this, we have something similar here. So we're writing this expression in this format, then we cannot have this to be your 2, okay, to the power of your x r raised to 1 all over 2, all over 2, right? Minus, yeah, 2 to the power of your y r raised to your 1 all over 2, all over 2, everything equal to your 504 easy okay now with what we are having here now what we do next is easy we have to bring in some alphabet to represent this expression and this expression okay so we cannot subtract these quantities we have here now so what we do so let's take here Let's continue on this side. All right, erase this. Okay, so at this point we cannot say let 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 use p let p be equal to the first exponent here, which is your x to the power of one all over two all over two, and um, let's take q is equal to y to the power of one all over two all over your two. With this, let's substitute into this expression. So this now implies that your um, 2 to the power of p minus your 2 to the power of q, this is equal to 504. Easy. Now look at what we have here. If you look carefully, you discover that here we are having base 2, base 2. But here we are having p and here we are having q. Here we are having a difference. So since we are having a difference here, and here we are having a positive integer. So it tells me that this expression here, 2 to the power of p, is greater than 2 to the power of q. Right? So this is what I'm saying. It means that your 2 to the power of p is greater than 2 to the power of q. That is what this expression implies. So if we are saying that 2 to the power of p is greater than 2 to the power of q, let's go to the exponent. p will be greater than q. 
also. So it also means that P is greater than Q. Okay? All right. So if it is true, P will now be equal to a set of constants plus our Q. So if we deduct from here, from this expression here, this now implies that your P will be equal to your Q plus a set of constants. And again, K must be greater than zero. Okay, so from here, we now note that K is greater than what? Zero. So K cannot be zero. For this to hold water, so K is greater than zero. From here, then we can now go ahead and substitute your Q plus K in place of our P here. Because we are saying P is equal to Q plus K. And here we have P. So we can now put the whole of this into this. So doing that, this now implies that our 2 to the power of Q plus K, then minus 2Q is equal to 500 and four. Any confusion? No. Now look at this expression we have here now. We can rewrite this according to the law of indices again. Okay? So if I write this 2 to the power of Q dot your 2 to the power of K minus your 2 to the power of Q equal to 504. This has not changed anything. We now have 2 to the power of Q 2 to the power of Q. Come on. So let's factor out 2 to the power of Q here. All right. So let's continue here. So this now give us 2 to the power of Q, rather, bracket. Here we're left with your 2 to the power of K minus. Here we're left with 1, close bracket, equal to 504. Easy. Now what we do here is this. We have to rewrite 504. How do we now rewrite this Number here. Rewriting this, we look for the products or we look for the factors of 504. Two of them that when multiplied together will give us 504. Now, how do we get those factors? You must put the base number into consideration, not just taking any factor. Because the factors of 504, we have um, two. 3, uh, 7, 63, so far, so far. So, among the factors of this, we have to pick two. And in picking the two, like I said, we must put this base number into consideration. So, how do we get the two? Let's take your 504. So, we now use your two to divide this. So, two here will give us um, two, five, two. 2 again will give us 1, 2, um, 6. 2 again will give us uh, 6, 3. So we are going to have here 8 times 63. So 8 times 63 will give us your 512. So because 2 cannot go into this again, so we are taking 8 and 63 as a factor. And why are we doing that? Because remember we said x and y are positive integers, right? Okay, so we can now rewrite this as your 2 to the power of Q, bracket 2 to the power of K, minus 1, close bracket, is equal to your 8 times your 63. Easy. At this point, what do we do? Here we are having a product here. Here we are having a product here. So it does implies that we can equate the left-hand side to the right hand side, the quantity is here. But on what ground are we to equate this? This is an even number. This is an even number. Now here we are having minus one, so automatically this will give us odd number. Why this is also odd number? So let's equate even to even and odd to odd. So it means that here, this will be equal to this, and everything here will be equal to your 63. All right, good. So let's continue. Doing this, this will now give us 2 to the power of Q is equal to 8. Now, 8 could be written as your 2 to the power of 3. Easy. So if we are now having 2 to the power of Q 
equal to your two to the power of three. What happens? The bases are the same. So the strikeout, and here we are left with Q is equal to three. We've gotten the value for our Q. Now, you may think I'm going to solve for the value of K here in order to get my P from here. But I don't want to do that. I want to leave this and jump to solving to my P directly from this place. Since I've gotten the value for, your, uh, for our Q already, they come to this expression here. So from here, I can also say from your 2 to the power of P minus 2 to the power of Q equal to 504, I can get my P without wasting time. Okay? Let me put this down so that you see it very well. Look at where it is. So I will put my value here to give me 2 to the power of P minus 2 to the power of 3. This is equal to 504. And here we have 2 to the power of P. This is equal to this to this other side, we have 504 there plus your 8. So from here, this now gives us 2 to the power of P. This is equal to 512. Okay, 512. All we just need to do is to rewrite 512 in base 2. Can we express that in base 2? Yes, we can. Okay, so let's continue on this other side of the board. So this now implies that your 2 to the power of P is equal to 2 to the power of 9. So the basis will take care of the cells again. So this now implies that your P is equal to 9. So we've gotten the value for our P and our, our Q. Okay, so we have our P and our Q. But if you look at the initial equation, we don't have P and Q. There was a place where we said, let P is equal to this and Q is equal to this. So let's go and substitute to get the actual value for our X and Y. All right. So we now say recall. Recall that we said P is equal to, we should let P equal to 1 all over 2 all over 2. What is the value of our P? P is equal to 9. So this is equal to 9. Just cross multiply. Because this is all over 1. So if we cross multiply, we have x to the power of 1 all over 2 is equal to 18. We are looking for x. What we do? We just take the square of both sides, take the square of x too. So this goes with this. We are now left with x is equal to the square of 18 will give us um, 324. So we have 3, 2, Four. We've gotten the value for our x. Good. So we've gotten the value of x, which is going to be here. Then let's go ahead and solve for the value of y from the second expression where we said q is equal to uh, y to the power of 1 all over 2. Again, let's erase this. For our y, we said Q, let Q be equal to Y to the power of 1 all over 2, all over 2. Then our Q will solve already to be 3. So this equal to 3. This all over 1. Cross multiply will give us Y to the power of 1 all over 2 is equal to um, 6. Is equal to 6. Okay, so if we have this to be 6, to get Y, again, we square both sides. We square this, this, this leaves. Then we now have Y is equal to your 30. Six. So we've gotten the value for our x, for our x and y. But can we check if that will give us um, the needed answer or if that will satisfy our, our question? Now let's check. So let's take here check. Our question is 2 to the power of square root of 2, rather to the power of your x. We calculated our x to be 324, okay? Then minus 2 to the power of square root of 2, please. Or am I forgetting this? Then to the power of your y, solve this to be 36. Everything equals to 504. All right, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. 
So let's write the radical here and the radical here. So this will now give us your 2 to the power of 1 all over 2 or to the power of, this is 18. So we have 18 minus your 2 brackets, 1 all over 2 or to the power of 6 equal to 504. Good. So we cannot use this to multiply this, use this to multiply this. This is all over every stable one. This is all of a visible one. So two year one, two year nine, two year one, two year three. So we now have two to the power of nine, then minus two to the power of three equal to five hundred and four. Two to the power of nine is five hundred and twelve. Minus two to the power of uh, three is eight, right? Equal to five hundred and uh, four. If we carry out this subtraction here, this will give us five hundred and four, which is equal to your five hundred and four. Okay, so this shows that the two root, which is your x and your y, are correct because they have been proven, they have shown that they satisfy this expression here. And also, if you check this, we said x and y are positive integers. So that has also been proven. Okay, so this marked the end to this nice exponential challenge from algebra. If you gain something, you've learned something from this video, give the video a thumbs up. And if you love what has just happened here, yeah. Just leave a comment in the comment section and I will reply to it. It could be times J or you observe any error in the process of solving, then do not hesitate to drop it in the comment section. We are there to reply to your comment. Again, this is Online Mass TV and my name is Jake's Animal. As you all know, for those that are new, you may not know, but my name is Jake's Animal. Now that you know, can you subscribe? And when you subscribe, turn on the bell notification button. That is the only way you will get notified whenever we drop an amazing video like the one you just watched right now. Remember, every one of us at Online Mass TV loves you, most especially this man talking to you, Jake. Loves you so much. Bye. For now. <laughs>